everybody Carol here welcome back to my channel so I'm really excited about this video because the Jay Dixon Bressing Company contacted me asked me if they could send me some of their latest products for me to demo on video and I said sure so these are 24 gorgeous micas I had a really hard time picking out a color. And of course the resin is their newest upgraded version that resists yellowing and is crystal clear. And also in the box with the resin, these are the two bottles. And then came also a silicone mat, some chess piece molds, uh, stirrers, a spreader, and two measuring cups and gloves. I was like, wow, this is a nice deal here. So what I'm going to do is use this mold that I've been dying to use that Stacy S sent me for my Amazon wish list. I'm really excited. It's a wind chime. And I picked out seven colors plus black that match the chakras because I was really uh, blown away by all the beautiful colors. I couldn't figure out what to do. So I figured I'd just do chakras. So I will also use shimmer white, you'll see, because there are four pieces I was not going to do out of the shapes. I was just going to do the seven celestial pieces, but um, I made too much resin, too much black resin. And uh, I decided I would fill those four in and I used white shimmer to um, dust in those molds instead of picking another color. So that was one lesson. Lesson number one, don't use so much resin because for what I'm going to do, the technique, it takes a few layers and I really overfilled in the end with the top coat, which wasn't terrible. I just had some overspill to trim, but I could have gotten away with when I put the black in doing just half full. Instead, I went like two thirds full. So that was mistake number one, <laughs> but you learn. It's the only way you learn, right? So I'm really excited about the technique I'm going to use too. It's uh, pretty new. I saw it done on TN Art and she said that it's uh, pretty new out there, but she didn't say who created it, so I don't know. But anyway, it's using UV resin, something that JD Diction also sells, which is really great. But you'll see, I'm going to show you how to make moon craters. I'm so excited. I thought, what a perfect time to make these since I'm doing a moon and celestial themed wind chimes. Absolutely perfect. So as you can see, I am dusting with my fingers. If you have super sensitive skin, I wouldn't recommend it. It's just the brush kept leaving hair, so I thought this is easy. And what's nice about this mica powder is this is also used in eyeshadows. So obviously it's going to be uh, more non-toxic to be on the skin. So I had no problem with it whatsoever. So now I dusted the first seven shapes with the seven chakra colors also. And then you will see after I get to the black um, resin part where I realize I have way too much. So I dusted the other four leftover ones with the white shimmer. And then we go from there. Now, I also want to mention that Jay Dixon has made me an affiliate. So I have an affiliate link in the description below. And if you go in through that link, I also have a coupon code COSMICCAROL10, which will give you 10% off when you purchase from their website. So I will get a little commission if you do but no extra cost to you. In fact, you get 10% off, which is really exciting. So that's in the description below, along with all the product information and my Instagram, Facebook, Etsy, 
Amazon wish list and my email address to contact me if you want something made for yourself or you see something I've made that you'd like to purchase just let me know so now I will shut up for a few minutes but I will be back in time for the moon crater technique time to make moon craters so this technique takes dishwashing liquid any brand water and you do one part dishwashing liquid and to two parts water and you need a straw and the whole idea is you've got to blow bubbles and so I'm applying a little UV resin and I decided to do tiny sections at a time because I have a very small UV lamp and I wasn't sure uh, what would happen if I did too much. I think the bubbles would be popping before I could get the, the lamp to them. So you'll see what I mean. And this was a lot of fun, I have to tell you. I had to keep saying to myself, Carol, blow through the straw, don't suck it in, and drink soapy water. Because that's the kind of thing I would do. So here you go, you, you plop the bubbles on, and then you put the light, you clear it for four to five minutes, but it make you sit and watch that. Now look at those cool, craters the effect is amazing so i did speed parts of this video up or we'd be here all day but you can get the gist of everything i'm doing here so i did one small section at a time and i got much more proficient at blowing bubbles by the time i got to the end that's for sure so you will see <laughs> <laughs> and let me say before I shut up again that this resin, I didn't have to heat it. I didn't have to use my torch or even a toothpick. There wasn't one bubble. After I poured it, anything that was there came right to the top and popped all on its own. I was like shocked. I mean, I, I am really impressed with this resin, guys. And I'm not just saying that. 
because I would tell you if I didn't if if I didn't like it because I've used some resins that I absolutely would never use again. And this had a nice um I'd say 30 to 40 minutes working time too. Now all you did here was put the UV lamp over it and the bubbles just popped and popped and popped and when they disappeared there was the design right there. It was like magic. So I really had a good time with this and I am going to use this technique again for sure. However, lesson number two, I will not use a paper cup for my soap water next time because it just gets too soft and flimsy. I'll use plastic or silicone. So that's lesson number two that I learned on this project. So now I'm going to shut up and I will be back in time for the unmolding. Enjoy.
away. They cure it overnight, and it's time to unmold. Now, these all popped out really great, but you will see the overflow on every one of these little pieces for sure. And uh, I just cut them off with scissors later really easily. It wasn't a problem. And you will see on the one star, the yellow one, uh, there was so much overfill connected to the star next to it that a little piece of the top coat ripped off on the corner and I just used a little UV resin. You can't even tell which corner it was. So I'm real happy. Look how pretty these came out. The front with the design and even the back is really pretty. And as I said, I am sure, first of all, use less resin for each layer. I am sure that you could pop it out, turn it over, do the effect with the bubbles on the back side too, and then just put a, a thin top coat like you would on coasters if you were going to hang it and have it spinning all the time so that all sides would have the um, craters on them. But like I said, I'm going to be putting it against a wall or in a window in my house and really the front side's the only thing that's going to be seen. So I am just really over the moon <laughs> with the way this whole thing came out and after I'm done totally unmolding everything I'm going to put it together and then I will show you how it all looks connected and if you've made it this far I truly hope that you will subscribe if you haven't already and give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what you think of this technique and look how cool it looks all strung together. Um, I'm really happy with it. So till next time, everyone, please stay safe, be kind, and have a great day.